This is something that believers around the world don't really understand. They don't really understand what took place in them when they got born again. The miracle that happened, the Bible calls it regeneration or rebirth in the spirit. Titus chapter 3 says when we believe, when we got saved, we were actually born again, regenerated in the spirit. And a miracle actually took place inside of you. And many believers don't, 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 they don't know that. They don't think anything happened. They, a lot of believers think, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. In fact, they think, I have to spend my whole life trying to be holy and righteous, and then only at the end will I know if I got saved. Well, I'll get saved right at the end and then go to heaven. But if I live sinful, then I don't know. If I die in sin, then I'm going to go to hell. No, when you believe in Jesus, that's when you get born again. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, unless someone is born again, they cannot enter the kingdom. He said, you must first be born of the flesh, are born of water and born of spirit in order to enter the kingdom. So we're first born of the water. That's when we're physically born. But when you believe in Jesus, then you get born of the spirit. Miracle takes place. And when, when does somebody get born again? When do you get born again? At the end of your life after living sinless? Or when you believe? When you believe in Jesus. That's the point of salvation. That's the moment you get born again. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit, He takes your spirit and He supernaturally identifies it with Christ and He unites it with Christ and you are baptized into Christ. You are united in Christ's death, His burial, His resurrection, His ascension and His sitting down on the throne. Your spirit has been united with Christ. It has, been, it has come alive to Christ. When you got born again, your spirit came alive to Christ and it became part of the new creation. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. Amen. We all know that scripture. He is a new creation. Well, when I got saved, nothing changed about my appearance. I still looked the same. Nothing changed in my body. My body didn't become a new creation. Okay. I mean, you might look at me and think that I'm a part of the new... No, I'm just kidding. All right. No, my, my body actually is still part of the old creation. My body is still subject to decay. I, I got news for you. If you're saved, it, you know, your body is still part of the old creation order, the fallen world that is subject to frustration and decay. Our bodies are growing older, getting more wrinkly, getting more saggy. Okay? When you got saved, you didn't just instantly lose 30 kilograms. Okay, nothing changed. In your, it's still part of the old creation. Your mind, you still got all the same thoughts and thinking in your mind. You know, all, still the same ways of thinking. That's why the Bible says we've got to offer our body as a living sacrifice and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. But what, so, so if my body and my mind didn't become a new creation, then what part of me became a new creation? Your spirit. Your spirit became a new creation in Christ. And so the new creation is the eternal realm. It's the eternal order. It's the creation that we're going to be living in for eternity. Amen? Amen. The new creation. And so your spirit right now is a new creation. Your spirit right now is a part of the new creation order. It's not part of the old creation anymore. Behold, all things, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Your spirit right now is exactly how it's going to be in all of eternity. Your spirit has been made perfect in Christ. In fact, let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. It says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, speaking of Christ. And verse 10, which is just an awesome, amazing scripture. And you are complete in Christ, who is the head over all principalities and power. And you are complete in Christ. Other translations say you are, you've, re, you've received fullness in Christ. Okay, what part of you is complete in Christ? Your body? Your mind? No, it's still the same. Your spirit has been made complete in Christ. It's been given fullness in Christ. In other words, nothing else can be added to your spirit. Nothing else can be changed inside of your spirit. Your spirit was born again. It was made alive. It became part of the new creation. In fact, your spirit has been glorified. Not your, your mind and your body have not been glorified yet. One day they will be glorified. We will receive a glorified body. 1 Corinthians 15, when Christ returns, 
our bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye to be like Him. That's when we receive our glorified bodies. And in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that now we know in part, you know, talking about our minds, now we know in part, we understand in part, but when perfection comes, when eternity comes, when heaven comes, then we will fully know all things. We won't need gifts of wisdom and because we will know all things. That's when our mind will be glorified. Okay? So our mind, our mind and our body are still part of the old creation. One day they will be glorified, but our spirit is being glorified. It's part of the new creation. It's seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen? It's been given fullness. It's been made complete in Christ. Your spirit right now is how it's going to be in all of eternity. Sin cannot exist in your spirit because your spirit is perfect. It's got the fullness of Christ in it. Your spirit is like solid gold. Okay, you could drop the gold in the dirt. Your body, your mind can sin. See, your spirit can't even be tempted to sin. It's just perfect. It just wants to live for God all the time. If you live just from your spirit, you would live in perfect righteousness, perfectly in the will of God, passionate for Jesus every moment of every day. You would give, give anything for Jesus. Nothing would be a sacrifice if you could just live from your spirit. The problem is our mind and our body gets in the way. Amen. Our mind and our body gets tempted. Okay, that's, see, Adam and Eve, they walked in the Spirit. They walked with God in the Spirit. It was the most normal thing. Then the enemy came and he tempted them in the mind and the body. Amen. They saw that the tree was good for gaining knowledge. The mind was being tempted. It looked pleasing to the eye. That's the body, the physical. But if they stayed in the Spirit realm, they actually would have never fallen. Okay, because your Spirit doesn't want to sin. It wants to live for God every moment of every day. And if we will learn how to walk in the Spirit and subject our body and our mind. See, our body and our mind shouldn't be our master. And see, a lot of Christians that are walking in the flesh, the mind and the body is the master, the flesh is the master, and the Spirit is the servant. And, and the Spirit can't lead and make decisions because the mind and the body are in control. And so we have to Offer our body as a living sacrifice and renew our mind, which means we actually have to learn how to surrender our mind and get our mind and our body to lay down so, or to sit down so our spirit can stand up and rise up and rule and govern us. Because in our spirit is all the fullness of God. It's the nature of God. Perfection, Hebrews 10, 12 says he's made us perfect forever. We've been made perfect in our spirit forever, not until our next sin, but forever. Amen. Our spirit has been made perfect. And if we could live just from our spirit, I tell you, we would overcome all the desires of the flesh. We would hear the voice of God. And so God is calling us to walk from our reborn spirit. Amen? Amen. The problem is often it gets covered up. People don't know that they've got this incredible born-again spirit. In fact, you've got the nature of God. God said that I will write my law on their hearts. So when you got born again, God wrote his law in, on your heart, in your spirit, on your innermost being. And that's not his Ten Commandments. That's his nature. Amen. The nature of you've got the nature of God on the inside of you. That's the new nature. Hebrews, I mean, Ephesians 4 verse 22 to 24. It actually talks about put off the old man. That's the old creation man. This, the mind and the flesh. Put that off and be transformed in the spirit of your mind, that means learn how to surrender your mind to the spirit and put on the new man. Okay, put on the new. See, you've got to do something about it. It's not automatic. Walk in the spirit, it's not automatic. You've got to do something. You've got to put on the new man. You've got to put off the old man. It's like mind, body, sit down. You're not in control. You're not leading me. You're not making decisions. My spirit is in control. My spirit is making decisions because my spirit is one with Christ. It's perfect in Christ. It's got God's nature.